A complaint for negligence was filed with the Superior Court as the family of Talia Montgomery is seeking compensatory and punitive damages. According to court documents, Montgomery was first treated at GMH on December 3, 2009 after complaining of stomach pains, diarrhea, and eye and lip discoloration. The family alleges that Dr. Jeffrey Galgo improperly diagnosed her and Dr. Faraz Uradi had incorrectly administered the drug heparin. Montgomery left Guam for four days to the Philippines where she received treatment and her condition improved. She was admitted back to GMH on December 21st to receive medication prior to a referral and transferred to Good Samaritan Hospital. She never made it to California, though. Despite attempts to have her discharged, the family contends GMH personnel thwarted their efforts. It was during this five-day stay that Talia received at least 12 milligrams of morphine within a 12-hour period. They claim that Dr. Vincent Duenas carelessly administered the drug, causing her to become unresponsive and physically emaciated. They blame inadequate and improper patient care checks, controls and record keeping, as well as excess fluid administration for Talia's death that occurred on December 27, 2009. Montgomery's family believes that Dr. Duenas was incompetent and unfit to perform the procedures or render treatment as they claim the physician was placed on an excluded list of providers capable of treating patients who receive federal funding because of a prior overprescription of a dangerous controlled substance to a prior patient. They claim GMH knew or had reason to know that Talia would be subjected to an unreasonable risk of harm by Dr. Duenas exercising his staff privileges at GMH. The hospital, which is represented by Fisher & Associates, has 60 days from the date the complaint was filed to respond to the suit. Talia's family is seeking a trial to prove the amount of damages that should be awarded. While GMH Administrator Ray Vega could not comment on the case because it is under litigation, Vega did confirm that whatever privileges Dr. Duenas had been excluded from have since been reinstated and were done so prior to Vega taking the administrator position. He could not confirm how long Dr. Duenas was excluded from certain privileges at GMH, referring our inquiries to GMH's legal counsel. Reporting for Gorms News Network, I'm Mindy Egan.